Hey, it's Don Williams. I'm back for my monthly mentor session for Accelerators Organization. And so appreciate you bearing with me. And um, if you saw the previous video, ball cap, t-shirt, just got off the phone with the data center where we have uh, servers that are operated by a vendor that data center is still down, which is really inexcusable for a data center in Houston, Texas, who only had a tropical one uh, or had a um, level one hurricane. You just gotta expect that kind of stuff in Houston, Texas. And so that shouldn't bring you to a close. But anyhow, thanks for bearing with me. I'm back and I'll do my best to deliver a great mentor session today. So my first question is from Salon Gray and it's about CRM software. And here's the background. I own a custom apparel company, but we do much more than apparel. We do custom team uniforms, apparel, team stores, screen print, embroidery, DTF transfers. We also do banners, pop-up tents, and more. We're looking for a good CRM software, and if you feel it's worth it. So many out there, and they're quite expensive, but they don't really pertain to my industry, thanks. So the question again is about CRM software. So here's my thoughts on all CRM. Okay, one, CRM is only valuable if you're 100% compliant with it. And most companies, even big companies that implement CRM, they're not 100% compliant. Everybody doesn't log everything on every customer, every prospect, every vendor, every employee, every time. And so, and so therefore, it's questionable as to the integrity of the data. Now, probably the granddaddy, the grandmother of all CRM systems, the Salesforce, very pricey, very complex. Okay, I would probably never recommend Salesforce for a startup and certainly for a solopreneur or just a couple employee business. That's something to grow into as your business grows, maybe, okay? Don't really want to endorse any specific product, but um, you could do a Google search and you could find out whatever's the least expensive, which is going to be the least full featured, okay? And that's probably a good place to start. I would not go for the creme de la creme, okay? Until you have the bandwidth to deal with that kind of technology. Great question. My next question is from Nahid Ula. And Nahid says, should I show my business ventures on YouTube? Great question. And uh, Nahid is starting a dog walking business. It's my very first business venture and I have created business cards for it. Should I document everything on YouTube so that I can gain some traction and eventually brand myself? for the long term. So the question is, Nahid is starting a new dog walking business and should um, they start a YouTube channel and begin posting? So great question. And I am a big fan of social media as a way to establish credibility and authority. And so my recommendation would be this, begin recording as much material, as much content as you can, whether you post it all on YouTube or not. Um, I have had a YouTube channel in the past. I'm very active on LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, X, formerly TikTok, and was very active on YouTube. I also have a podcast, The Proven Entrepreneur Show, with about half a million downloads, which that's not Joe Rogan, but that's more than probably 95% of all podcasts on the planet. So I'm a big believer in social media. I'm a big believer in putting content out there. Okay. Now, the downside of social media is it can be a rabbit hole you fall into and you spend all day doing social media, which is not really building your business. So I am a believer and would encourage you to begin recording as much as possible and then posting on YouTube every once in a while and then leveraging that content for additional posts on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, 
and X, okay? And so let's talk about YouTube for a second. So my YouTube channel, which had 2,000 followers and over 300 videos, okay, for some unexplained reason, vanished about six months ago. And so after multiple attempts to reach out to YouTube, which of course is owned by Google, and so multiple attempts to reach out to Google, I never could get any answer other than um, harmful practices on videos on my YouTube. So not sure what that was, never could get clarification, but it doesn't really matter. 300 videos, 2,000 followers just vanished. So I'm literally in the process of relaunching on YouTube. And so I'll give you a little extra today. I'll, uh, I'm gonna shoot my feature video live right now. I'm gonna look at a different camera and a different recording and I'll shoot it. But if you saw the video uh, from an hour ago, like I said, ball cap, unshaved t-shirt, okay, kind of coming from entrepreneurial crisis mode. And then of course now, nice button up shirt, uh, suit, um, shaved, and all that. So I'm gonna turn and um, face a different camera, and I'm gonna shoot a YouTube feature video, and this will be a good example of how to do that. And what you wanna do is you wanna have a script, and so um, I did this to make this session go better. I just printed it out, and I'm gonna turn to the other camera, and I'm gonna look in the camera, okay, so that I'm looking in the eyes of the person watching that feature video, and I'm gonna record a feature video, and then I'll come back to this camera, and I'll answer um, the other questions from this month's mentor session. So, here we go, I'm gonna turn away for a second, and then I'll come right back. Hey, Don Williams here for the Proven Entrepreneur Show. I wanna welcome you to my YouTube channel. Today I have something really exciting to share with you, a resource that can change the trajectory of your business, and that's my podcast, The Proven Entrepreneur Show. Now, The Proven Entrepreneur Show is not just any podcast, it's a treasure of wisdom from the world's most successful entrepreneurs. Each episode dives deep into their journeys, revealing the good, the bad, and even the ugly, because there's always some downside to every entrepreneurial journey. You'll hear firsthand accounts filled with actionable advice, insights that should help you take the next step in your entrepreneurial journey. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the inside on The Proven Entrepreneur Show. Okay, so that'll go through a little bit of light editing, okay? And then we'll post that as the feature video at Don Williams Global on YouTube, and we're relaunching with video episodes of my podcast, The Proven Entrepreneur Show. So hopefully that provided a little extra to today's mentor session. I'll go back to questions, and here we go with Trevor Foldring. Trevor says, should you put prices on your website? And his business description is he works with men over 40 to help them lose body fat without dieting, going to the gym, or taking dangerous drugs. I'm asking the question because I want to position my program properly without having price objections. Although I understand the price is important, I don't want it to be the underlying factor that drives the decision of the buyer. I want individuals to understand the value and what we offer before asking the price. I honestly get frustrated when somebody just texts me, what's the cost? That shows they have no understanding of what we do or the value we provide. On my website, I try to give as much value and explanation of the program as possible so the price is of last concern. I want them to know we deliver results and give them amazing value for the price they pay. Please help. Okay, that's a great question. And there's kind of two thoughts. If you sell a product or service that is very low price, very um, competitive, so there is a gym that I think charges a dollar a month or $10 a month or something ridiculous, okay? And because they are certainly the leader in that industry, they should, and they do, might be Planet Fitness, maybe not, um, they do lead with pricing. No contracts, only $10 a month, whatever. 
okay? On the other hand, if you're a luxury or premium product, probably you don't want to disclose that until you have a chance to have a conversation with your prospect, okay? Luxury and premium products don't really have to compete on price, but a luxury or premium product probably does not get bought, does not get purchased strictly off a of website interaction. Typically, those require some personal interaction for the person to feel the value of what you're going to deliver. So, my short answer, and there's a complex, that's a complex question, a lot of different pieces to it, is probably it's not best for you to disclose pricing. Um, but then understand that when you have conversations and you do get to pricing after you've discussed feature benefit, feature benefit, feature benefit, many people just discuss features, must be feature benefit, feature benefit, feature benefit. After you've discussed all that and you get to pricing, understand that some people, um, it will knock them out because they have something totally different in their mind. And a sales consultant um, could certainly help you structure that messaging to where you have the highest conversion and that's a worthwhile investment. Okay, next question is Joe Cabral. Joe says, how do you make those tough long-term decisions today instead of focusing only on the short term? Oh, I love that question, Joe. I own Handyman Joe. I've fallen into, by my own actions, a cycle of making decisions for today and keep kicking the can down the road saying I'll deal with it later. I'm concerned basically the later is going to come around and I won't be re ready, mostly around money. How do you mentally get yourself to do the things you know are right, but you fight it? Thanks. Great question, Joe. And I think that's a human, it's not just you, man. It's like most humans. We have a tendency to want to deal with what we want to deal with and to try and procrastinate on everything else. The easiest way, the most effective way to make decisions based on the long term is know your mission. Know what your personal mission is and then know your business mission and vision and continually remind yourself of those. And those will act as uh, a control. They'll help you to stay the course for what you should be doing because you'll be asking yourself, does it help me achieve my mission? Does it help me achieve my vision? And um, that's the easiest way I know of to be sure that you're making the best decision regardless of the time frame. Okay, great question, Joe. Next question is Steve Wallman. Steve says, how do you suck it up and close down a business if it's not working when you don't want to throw in the towel and how to manage the emotions around starting anew? Well, that's a big, hairy question. I've been a sales leader and sales team manager for years. I decided to start my own product companies. They have not quite panned out for several reasons. Now I'm faced with shutting them down and starting, new, starting anew or continuing knowing it might not work out anyway. My question is, how do you manage those emotions and how do you know what is the best decision to make for the short and long term? So kind of related to Joe's question, let me repeat the question, how do you suck it up and close down a business if it's not working when you don't really want to throw in the towel and how do you manage the emotions around starting anew? So, tough question, tough situation, and the only thing I can tell you is this. Typically, the problem for an entrepreneur is not knowing what to do. They know what to do. The problem with an entrepreneur is not, it's not that they don't know, it's that they don't do, okay? And the faster you move from decision to execution, the more successful you'll be for the most part. So if you know you need to close them, I just want to encourage you, close them, okay? Every entrepreneur I know has failings in their past. Typically, the entrepreneurs that have the biggest wins, the biggest successes, they also had the biggest losses and the biggest failures. You know, society and school and our parents teach us that failure is the opposite of success. That's not true. Failure is part of the success journey. 
So if you know what to do, I want to encourage you, go ahead and do it. Move on. Do something else. Okay, next question, Erica Jones. Erica says, how do you continue on with the little things in the beginning when you are working on that life-changing dream? Her description is she owns a junk removal business and does Uber and other side gigs to keep moving in the direction of my dreams. I know I'm destined for greatness and I love helping people, but with limited capital, it's so hard to make this thing a reality. How do you get through this stage? Great question. I'm going to read the question again. How do you continue on with the little things in the beginning while you're working on that life-changing dream? Well, here's the reality. Okay, as an entrepreneur, as a business, you have to understand the purpose of a business is to deliver a product or service at a profit. Okay, a mission is to deliver a service to help achieve a goal with no thought of finance. But a business, every, th every activity in a business should fall under one of two umbrellas. One, does it bring money into the business? Two, does it keep money from leaving the business? Because a business, like a shark, a shark just swims and eats. That's it. A business should bring in cash, keep cash. That's it. If it doesn't fit under one of those two umbrellas, you ought to question yourself, why am I doing this? And so it's just as easy to design a business that will have positive cash flow as it is to design a business that has negative cash flow. Choose positive. Make the decision. I'm going to operate this as a business. We're going to sell high. We're going to buy low. And we're going to turn a profit. We're going to have money in our pocket. That's my session this month for Accelerators Organization. I hope that was helpful. I hope watching the YouTube uh, feature channel recording was helpful. Thank you for your indulgence, me being late and showing up um, disheveled after dealing with the data center. Have a great month. I'll see you next month. Thanks. Bye.